The following is a presentation of TFNN. The morning markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. You're going to say good morning. Say hello, everybody. Yeah, he's eating some puffs. Happy Friday, Tommy O'Brien the third, Tommy O'Brien the fourth. We're going to be trying to do the hour. We'll see how we go. But it's a beautiful morning. This morning is brought to you by uh, Sesame Street Puffs and Lightning McQueen. Not really, but essentially. Uh, you know what? I'll show you. Why not? You got to love children's goods, folks. You get these in any grocery store. Not exactly the healthiest, but they're a treat. And they are some form of veggie puff, but uh, pretty close. You stick Big Bird on anything? You stick Is that Big Bird? Did you tell them? Is that Big Bird? Okay. Is that his tongue? Is that his tongue? I know. So it's going to be an interesting hour, folks. We'll go back and forth between markets. We'll take a look at some stocks geared towards children. We got the markets this morning. What are stocks doing, Tommy? Are they flat? They're flat. S&P flat, trading at 4153. What are you looking at? I have a plus. Your puffs? You want to look at your puffs? Yeah. Yeah, Big Bird. He's looking at his tongue. Big Bird's got his tongue going. Tell them. Yeah. That's right. You know what? We'll pull it up so you can see yourself a little better, okay? So he has some idea that of all the people. It's pretty awesome, folks. What we do now is that... Mama. Nope, we're going to watch ourselves. Is that you, Tommy? Who's that? He's a big fan of Itsy Bitsy Spider, and I just pulled up our program on YouTube, and so he just saw a number of programs before I could click on our program quick enough. Uh, Itsy Bitsy Spider, a classic. What's the other one? The ants go marching one by one. Hoorah. What the ants go marching one by one? One by one. I know. It's a classic song, folks. Uh, you got to love it. It's going to be an interesting hour. Itsy Bitsy Spider. We'll watch that afterwards, okay? We're going to have to do a program for about an hour. We're going to talk about some stocks. Maybe we'll look at uh, one of the stocks we're going to look at, folks. Uh, Mattel coming up this hour because Tommy loves Thomas the Train. By name, of course, his friend Percy. Thomas is owned by a subsidiary of Mattel. We're going to take a look at that equity coming up. We're going to take a look at a different, uh, couple of different equities geared towards kids throughout the hour. We'll add a little bit of theme on top of the market action that we have going on as well. Are those delicious, Tommy? So this guy, we were up at about 6 in the morning. 6? I was up at about 5. This guy was up at about 6, yeah. And I know... Percy. Percy. So this is... We're going to talk Thomas already. Who is this? Do you tell them? Percy. Percy. And who is Percy's friend? Percy's friend. Thomas. Thomas. What number is Thomas. One. He's one. What number is Percy? He's six. He's six. Hopefully you can hear him through my microphone, folks. Uh, so this is Thomas. This is Percy, part of Thomas and Friends. I should. We're going to get uh, Mattel on the line. Thomas and Friends, uh, Fisher Price. They should be sending us sponsorship dollars as we speak. And pretty interesting. They're owned by Mattel. And we'll talk about Mattel, man. Mattel, tough chart. For Mattel shares, to say the least, recently. I'll pull that up. And I'm talking about a very long term chart on Mattel. Much look. You know what? Why not, folks? We get the markets essentially flat right now. Going to be an interesting Friday after yesterday's sell off towards the end of the day. I know. Is he eating puffs? Is he eating some puffs, Percy? Is he hungry? Thomas is eating some puffs. So you got to love, folks, right? We got, I mean, talk about classics, okay? You got Sesame Street puffs, which I remember. Unfortunately, almost 40 years ago, you got Lightning McQueen, a Disney classic, Cars, never going out of style, tell them, right? And then you got Thomas and Friends. The most amazing thing about children's program and watching it over and over from an, a straight business perspective is that these programs never go out of style. I mean, you look at the most amazing show ever, Breaking Bad, uh, Game of Thrones, right? Yes, they're around. But in 10 years, are people going to be diehard fanatics of the show? There'll be some, okay? I know I'm talking to everybody, huh? What's Thomas doing? 
but kids programs, man, there's nothing like it. Every five years, you get a new batch of five-year-olds, two-year-olds, okay? Every two years, you get a new batch, whatever it is. But, you know, every three to five years, you're circling through the kids because maybe you're out of this phase in two to five years or something, right? Uh, we've talked about programs before in terms of Coco Melon, which is a huge one with children. Tommy, one of the, it's nursery rhymes and stuff like that. Probably one of the best things if you want your kid to watch any screen time. And I've talked about screen time has good and bad in terms of where it can be. And we're going to talk about the economics of all this stuff because it is interesting, right? Coco Melon, they're on Netflix. That's how we found it, on Netflix. And geared towards younger kids. So we have a five-year-old, actually a six-year-old, just turned six in the house as well. And he's out of Coco Melon, has been out of Coco Melon for about a year. So think about it. Once you hit five years old, you're done. They got a period of between like two and five year old. It's nurseries, very simple stuff. But you get that batch every single three years and there's a new batch and they find you on YouTube, they find you on Netflix and the same exact programs can run forever and collect video views. Same thing on YouTube. You see it with the likes of Disney, you see it with the likes, I mean, Cars, I, I don't know what year Cars came out. It's like 2005, something like that, I think. I'll have to look it up. And yeah, huh? Oh, cars. cars, you love Cars, I know. Yeah, we're gonna... Itsy Bitsy Spider? Itsy Bitsy Spider. Talk about a classic, right? Did you tell them? Do you like Itsy Bitsy Spider? I know. Mm. We're going to have to watch it later, Tommy, okay? All right, we're going to get to some market, folks. What I'm going to kick it off with, actually, okay, is a channel line in the S&P. We're going to get some real market action. If you take anything away from this program, this morning... Possible channel line forming from the highs that we had on Tuesday. Hey, what are you saying? You're, you're being, they got to hear me. It, it, is Lightning McQueen eating too? I know. They love your puffs, Tommy. They love those puffs. Is Thomas hungry? Oh, he's eating good. Oh. S&Ps, folks, make it to a high of 4198.25. Tommy, do you see that? Do you see it on the chart? What do you think? Is that a downtrend channel? You shift over to the SPY, okay? And interesting that the bottom part of this channel, and I tell you, I had it on my chart yesterday, didn't quite pull the trigger just, trigger just because this market's been accelerating, and pretty interesting that that's exactly where this thing pivoted yesterday, okay? And you're talking about just zooming in on yesterday's action. Had a price of about maybe 413.50. Got up to, I think, 413.70 yesterday was the high. Yeah, 413.69 at first. And then you challenged that area 20 minutes later to 413.70. You got above there. And then this market traded down almost a full percent from where you were. Now, we've bounced nicely. Okay, and you can put this on your chart. But I put that on there, man, because it would be interesting if the downtrend channel began. All we've done is given up action to the beginning of Monday, okay? So you barely got a negative week. Meanwhile, the downtrend channel starts. We come into earnings, okay, next week. I got them all written down. We got earnings next week. Google and Microsoft on Tuesday, Meta on Wednesday, Amazon on Thursday. You follow that up with the Fed decision the following Wednesday, and you follow that up with Apple earnings on May 4th, the day after the Fed decision. Uh, but we're coming up. I didn't think that we were going to hit this thing next time, I mean, in terms of the next day. But guess what? This market, you can trade two ways. I've been saying it. Look how close we are, man. We got 16 minutes until the opening bell. We're about 40 cents away from the top of that channel line. You get S&Ps. Basically flat markets coming into Friday action. Stay tuned, folks. Tommy O'Brien the third. Tommy O'Brien the fourth. Tell them. Say, we'll be right back. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. That's a big one. Welcome back, folks. Tommy's a fan of the commercials, man. He loved the Rockets in my newsletter, Rocket Equities. He loves the Tigers. Can't go wrong. Did you show him your Tiger? Let's show him your Tiger. Has you got a Tiger on your shirt? Oh, there he is. Just like that. Just like that. That's right. Yeah. He's got two little legs. That's his little feet. Huh? Yeah, did you show him? I know. So cool. Yeah, those are his little toes. Yeah. Huh. Nose. His nose? Is that his nose? Very good. Yeah. You tell him you know all your numbers? One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Daddy. You got to stay there for right now, okay? Welcome to Daddy. I got more toys down here. Do you want to show him what else we got? You know what's funny? I get all his favorite toys. He wants his tablet, which I do have right now. Hey. So, he's a big fan of Nemo right now as well. And, of course, McQueen. Now, we're going to segue this a little bit, okay? Because what's so interesting is I just told you about Coco Melon, and I was going to go over a little bit of the story behind this one company, which is run by a former Disney executive, executive Kevin Mayer, Meyer, who, for all intents and purposes, could be the guy that they take back to Disney to take over after Iger as the CEO. It's been talked about. He left the company because he got passed over by Chappick. He is the guy that ran Disney Plus in the beginning, okay? So I'm pulling up a few stories of the past, just trying to go over this story. It's a private company, okay, folks? And what is up? There's a Bloomberg article up from last night within the last 24 hours that the producers of Coco Melon, the show I was just tell talking to you about. Coco Melon. Coco Melon, exactly. Look at that. Who's that? Is that JJ? They're making a movie, Tommy. Maybe this will be the first big screen movie we attend. Uh, interesting, because Tommy is just old enough, that their demographic is not usually suited to sitting still in a big screen movie theater. So it's probably just going to be a Netflix, that type of deal. But do you love Coco? You love Coco. I know. Did you tell them? Do you love Coco? Do they sing? So it's a great program in terms of singing. They go over the alphabet. They go over numbers, right? They go over uh, vegetables, colors, stuff like that. That's where you can see a tremendous amount of learning. The other program that's amazing on Netflix has nothing to do with this story. It's called Number Blocks. 
five, four, three, two, one. I was watching it with my dad uh, and Tommy a couple weekends ago, sitting out back of the house, relaxing. And even he was amazed in terms of he was getting some of the stuff wrong, folks, and Tommy was getting some of the stuff right. Okay, and he'll be the first one to tell you that as he's watching. But you can see how these programs do it. So this this company, okay, to back it up a little bit. Check this out. I got a couple stories. Okay, we're talking billions of dollars when you look at these programs, folks. And if you saw how much, how big a fan children are of these programs, and if you saw the amount of way that they are able to merchandise these characters, is he eating? And it's run by this guy, Kevin Mayer. Meyer. I think it's Meyer. And M A Y E R. So this story from about, what, a year and a half ago, okay? Moonbug, the company behind the popular YouTube channels Coco Melon and Blippi, agreed to be acquired by two former Disney execs in a deal valued at $3 billion. Now, I haven't talked about Blippi yet. Tommy, do you like Blippi? Okay. Blippi is probably right up there as well. So it's amazing that one company has cornered the market on programming that most kids could find and the most interesting part about it is that they are across multiple streaming platforms in terms of netflix has coco melon they also have little angels which the same company acquired i think in the last six months or so very similar to this type of program oh those good puffs those delicious tell them are they delicious you want to see yourself there you are are they delicious puffs is that you on the tv did you say hi to everybody hi everybody so he'll come in my office, folks. He'll sit on my lap on the desk. And you see, you see yourself. Do you say hi to everybody? They can see you. Hi, everybody. You know you want to. And he'll come up and say, hi, everybody. Because he sees the camera. He sees. Hi, Mom. Yeah. Hi, Mom. Yeah. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Oh. I know. Yeah. So Netflix has Coco Melon, okay? They also have Little Angels. But then we have HBO, okay? And you go into HBO, and what do they have? They have Blippi. So Tommy is a fan of programming on Netflix and on HBO. His favorite program on Netflix is owned by this company. His favorite program on HBO is owned by this company. This one small private company. Would you want to play with some of your other toys? Because look what I have. You haven't even showed them yet. Who else do you love? No, you don't want these yet? Okay. Yeah? What about some of your dinosaurs? Or your seal? Oh, what's that? He loves his seal. And then he loves his dinosaurs as well. Huh. Yeah. Is that good? So we'll see if we make it through the hour. When I, Whenever I go on with him, it could be a two-minute affair. You know? Two-year-olds? Um... They have their own character, folks, and they're coming into themselves, and it's amazing to watch. And yes, you love that seal. That was so cute. I know. Did you give them hugs? All oh, the best. The best hugs. All oh, the best hugs. That's so sweet. I know. That seal loves you, Tommy. Yeah. So cute. I know. He's so soft. Do you know what else we got back here? Hugs. Hey, what about the... What about the rabbit? I know, buddy. I know. You're the best. <laughs> My man. I know. You're going to play with Percy? So it's amazing that this one company dominates. Imagine that, right? Children's programming on two different monumental streaming apps. Uh, the, the third being Disney. And you know what dominates on Disney. Disney does. Okay? So Netflix. Yes. Netflix. Oh, Netflix? You know Netflix, don't you? Tell me, what do you like? Do you like Netflix or do you like Disney? Disney. Disney. Yeah. Or do you like Blippi or Coco Melon or Little Angels? Decisions, folks. Decisions. Or Coco Melon. Or Coco Melon. I know they got a movie coming. You see this, Tommy? So... If you ever have the opportunity to spot this company, folks, by the time they go public, it might not be worth it because these days, 
Uh, we have watched Peppa the Pig before. Whoa, what happened to the seal? Uh, and by the time they push it out to the public, you're talking about a company. I mean, they just bought this company alone for $3 billion. They roll up children's, children's programming. They merchandise it. They're going to be at a valuation far above that by the time they go public. But you see how the opportunities, right, that used to be present in the public markets are not there because they're not taking this company public, man. They're backed by private equity. They got the guy that used to run Disney Plus. And as I'm pulling up the articles here, and we're going to come into this break. Uh, there's his story. Candle Media, co-CEO and founder, that is the company, okay? Now, he's the guy, if you remember, that was the CEO of ByteDance and TikTok. Hey, what do you want? Oh, did you drop Thomas? All right, we're gonna pick up Thomas, folks. We're gonna talk more about this. We're gonna go over some of the other equities that, cu that are coming up uh, with their numbers that are moving, and we'll be right back for the open. Let's get it, buddy, let's get it. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Back to the charts. We got the markets open right now, and you got the S&Ps basically flat. Look how close we got to that channel line I was talking about. Almost there. And then we got a little bit of a sell-off, man. Let's see. Come on. Cooperate with me, mouse. What did we get to? 4, 12, 49. And uh, we'll see. As our man Basil Chapman says, the day is young, folks. And 
back to some of the story. So I'll finish it up. I was trying to do it in a segment, but we get distracted. Uh, we now have some coloring going on on the tablet. Are we doing coloring? Are they coloring their hand, Tommy? What color is that? Pink. Is it purple? Yeah. Two purples. Two purples. What else are they doing? Are they dancing? Is that a plane? Are they going to color? The plane. They're going to color the plane. So the this... Green. I, with green. So this story... Uh, let's decline those. March 15th of this year. And here is the gentleman I was talking about. And my mayor had stepped down from one role. Okay? But he's going to be in the speculation because he left Disney in only 2020. And he was the guy that was their top streaming executive. So for what it's worth, we spent enough time on it. You want to get out? We might have to wrap it up after this segment, folks. Tell them. Oh. Huh. The last part I did want to show you is this guy, Blippi. Um, so this is a children's character. Okay. I want to I'm showing them Blippi. Do, 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 do you want to see? Do you want to tell them about Blippi? Tell me. Is that your... Is that your guy, Blippi? Yeah, I know. And to this guy's credit, man, he did this all himself in terms of Blippi before he sold it. Uh, an actor created it, pushed it out, sold it to the company. And what's so interesting now is, is that they have another actor in the same role. And so you think, I mean, they wouldn't buy the content, right, if they were buying the actor. Because they're going to keep this character forever, man. And so they have a character. They now have a new friend, Mika, a girl, of course, expand the audience in there. And so they own it all. And it's interesting. And you can't have a better guy running it, Kevin Mayer. And it'll be interesting to see how that goes out. But if you're a fan, if you have grandkids, you probably know. If you have kids, you may know to the same degree at the same age. And they got a movie coming out on top of it all. Pretty interesting. All right, let's get back to market action, folks. We're going to kick it off with Apple as they continue to try and expand into health okay so let's see how apple's trained this morning because they come out with their numbers may 4th well there's some action for you man you spike lower apple yeah not sure what that one was let's see yeah there's the journaling app they were talking about nonetheless you got quite an acceleration down almost 163 you're back to 165 right now for apple and they're going to have a journaling app in the expansion of the health initiatives, the daily activities log is set to compete with existing software. And what's interesting here is I use a couple things for my own health. And I do occasionally go into Apple whatever, and it's fine. I don't even know what their app is in terms of Apple Health. or I do go into the health in some capacity because it tracks certain things. But in terms of tracking macros, if you ever do that, and I do it occasionally... I do that in uh, other apps, and then I just happen to have a smart scale that tra tracks things as well. And I'm not obsessive about it, but that's just where technology is going, man. You know, I, I, I track what I exercise because I have a iWatch that just tracks your heart rate, your duration. By doing that, that puts the data into things. What are they doing? Is that Thomas? So, of course, he's watching Hello. Thomas the Train. The last part of the story of the kids jumping back, folks, which is so interesting, is where YouTube fits into everything, okay? Because YouTube has every show I just told you about. And they also monetize everything on YouTube. So these channels, Blippi, right? Uh, let me see. I meant to pull up Google uh, chart. Blippi. Coco Melon, Little Angels, they're all on YouTube, which is where they started with hundreds of millions of views, and it's all free for children. And yes, they watch ads, okay? But that's like the, la the last real part of this in terms of streaming companies. So think about it. This one company dominates the streaming platform for our children on Netflix and on the HBO streaming platform, and they dominate it on YouTube. Well, which company would you rather own? Netflix, HBO, and YouTube or the one company that owns the content that the kids are searching out on all three entities. Interesting when you look at it like that, right? And of course, that company, private money. They're not letting you in. So, uh, Apple shares, though, trying to get more into health. 
And they're down about seven tenths percent. Take a look on a longer term time frame and Apple. Critical area, bumping up against the upper boundary line of where we are. And I was talking about it yesterday. You're talking about a trading range of 40 to $50 when this thing really gets moving one way or the other. And if you're expecting big things from the market in either direction, you want to keep your eye out for Apple, for sure. Talking a little bit of bigger picture. Yeah, I, I would, you know, you're a fool if you think this one's not coming, man. The Fed rethinks the loophole that masked losses on SVB securities. Potential change is going to reverse the 2019 decision to loosen rules for mid-sized banks. There you go. Yeah, of course they are. Because the only reason they loosen them is because they all argue they're not systematic. And when the time goes time to go BK, they also, hey, they're, they're systematic. We can't let them go BK. Well, if that's the case, we have to go back to the regulations in place. They're weighing the change after those collapses. If adopted, it would reverse the loosening of the rules by the Fed in 2019, heighten oversight on mid-sized banks by extending restrictions that currently only apply to the largest, most complex firms. They're considering extending toughened restrictions to about 30 companies with between 100 and 700 billion in assets. That seems like a good idea. If the companies holding upwards of $700 billion in assets aren't being regulated to the degree that they might be able to, because of course they're systematic. We're not gonna have a $700 billion bank collapse, let alone a $200 billion bank collapse, right? Because what's gonna happen? It's gonna reverberate in a way that we're not comfortable with. Regional banks, US Bank Corp, PNC, Truist, Capital One Financial could be affected and could be made to bolster capital. That could prompt steps such as trimming buybacks, retaining more earnings, or raising new capital from investors. Uh, I think that one should be assumed, not just speculated, folks, because in light of things have changed. You know, I mean, we're just not going to let these banks collapse to that degree, and they're not capitalized as well as they should be because they've been really accustomed to a different interactive society in terms of what they're used to. Um, for how easy deposits have been and how low interest rates have been forever. But that's going to change. All right, folks, uh, what else we got? We got Procter & Gamble. Let's jump over to them real quick as we come into this break. And Procter & Gamble, up 4% on their numbers with the market flat. Earnings powered by higher prices again. I don't know how long they can last, okay? And that's the problem here. When inflation starts subsiding, they don't have the power to raise prices. What's going to happen? What's going to happen is their margins are going to get crushed and share prices could trade lower. Not today, though. Not today, Procter & Gamble says. We'll talk a little bit though about this when we get back. Hey, are you going to tell everybody we'll be right back? We're going to be right back? Oh, in Publix. Look at He says in Publix, the groceries. That's where we go Publix shopping, huh? Say we'll be right back. We'll be right back, everybody. Yeah. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Jellyfish. Welcome back, folks. Welcome so unfortunately, this just ran out of batteries. Yeah, as we speak. Um, I was going to tell you, I know you love this, but we can't touch it, remember? Yeah. If you get a chance, folks, these are jellyfish. They sell them at Target. It's a Smithsonian um, child education toy, um, science and learning, math, STEM toy. Oh, get out. You want to get out? I know. We're going to wrap it up a little bit early this hour, folks. I know. Because... You know, we don't just park them here. Okay. Uh, this is a great toy. Kids love it. Check it out. Uh, if you get the chance, Procter & Gamble train higher. Okay, we're going to say bye to everybody. Let's pull it up. Ready? We're going to pull it up when we say bye. There you are. You see yourself? Are we going to say goodbye? You tell everybody to have a good weekend? Yeah. Say bye, everybody. I know. Uh, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. We made it 43 minutes past the hour. Okay. He's ready for a nap, so we're going to get him ready. Say bye, everybody. We're going to count it down. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye, everybody. We'll see you on Monday. Basil's up next. We just got about a 15-minute break here, and then Basil's coming up. Have a good one. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. Trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, uh, and Tommy 3 and Tommy 4 had to exit the scene. They did a great job. It was fun to see. Terrific to hear. I think Tom, uh, Tommy did a great job with his son. I am not sure that my kids would ever have sat still that, for that long. Um, so a couple of things going on. This is the, going to be the hour, the last uh, section of the uh, hour that uh, Tommy uh, Jr. does. This is the morning market kickoff. So let me show you a couple of things here. This is the E-mini. It's been in a rising trend ever since 8.30, about, well, let's call it 8, I think it was 8.09. From 8.09, on the one-minute chart, the E-mini went positive, and it stayed positive all the way through from about 41.44 until it made a peak, G slash C, right there, and flipped negative at 41.55. Now it's gone negative, and just as we're speaking, it's gone positive yet. I must tell you, even though for subscribers to my opening call, uh, for the first time in a while, we've stayed, we, we, we got the short side, and we've stayed short for a couple of days now, um, via the S&P, there's a reason for it, and I'll go through it in my show coming up in the next hour, the Tiger Technician's Hour, but let me just show you something that's really important. And I'm going to be doing a webinar, and I want, I want and in the webinar, I want to go through, for, this, for subscribers to the opening call, I want to go through some of the techniques, the whys, the wheres, and the wherefores, just why I didn't go really negative at that peak D, whereas the one that was made, uh, the fourth highest peak in the Chapman Way methodology, uh, at 34,331 on the 14th of Feb, we had that turn down. And that turn down was, it took one day, with an inside bar and then a big red candle, and then it was followed through with just lower highs and lower lows. But the MACD was so weak and the stochastic was already very weak. The reason why I said this is a process is if we are going to get a turn down, it's going to take a little bit and you're going to go maybe one by one, and I'll talk about that in my show coming up. But right now I'm going to say, look, the nine period moving average, I said once it's this high above the 14, don't expect, unless this is such bad news that the Dow dropped six or seven or 800 points, don't expect it just to be a straight down move. If anything, it can consolidate. It might even go sideways. And look at the MACD. The MACD is still holding well. It is turning down, but it's still holding well. Look at the um, uh, stochastic, still at 85%, even though it's turning down quite sharply. It's still at 85%, over 80%. That's good. On balance, volume has turned down. So this is a process. And I put a lot of uh, import into the nine period exponential moving average. I've done it for years and years and years, decades. And this is just telling me that it might be a little premature to think that we're just going to tank, but it's a process. And all I can say is if by Monday, maybe Tuesday, the Dow is under 33,500, it's at 33,813 right now, up 26. And you can see, I 
the more I read and the more negative I get from reading and the more I go through these markets step by step by step, the more I say there is so much going on here that is not what you read about. Look, the uh, why would you get Toll Brothers doing so well? Uh, Toll Brothers made a peak C in the monthly chart all the way back in November. What, let me just check. It was it November? I think it was. December. December at 7561. Drops below 40. I mean, that's a, what is that? I mean, that's a, about a 42% decline. And then what does it do? It rallies strongly. And now it's at 62. How can the, um, what was the other one? Lenar. Look at this. How can Lenar be almost at all time highs? Lenar housing back to the, to its December high back in, uh, in the 118, 119 area goes all the way down to the 60s, almost gets cut in half. And then what does it do? It rallies back, trading out 111. So when I say the Fed has a lot on its plate um, in terms of deciding what to do, a chunk of the work has been done. Yes, HDX, look at this. HDX is the housing, the Philadelphia housing sector index. Look at that move. Look at that cup formation that spiraled over the left side high in February. And the, that's the peak E that was made at 483, was it? 84. 484.03, uh, drops sharply to the four, just under 420. And now it's at four. I have to tell you something. There is so much that I like. And even if you look at the IYT, which is the transports, um, they're not doing all that well, but look at this, CSX. CSX had a big spike today, good news, 31.86 up $1.05. I think the reparations of the repairing of the damage that's been done in different sectors, and remember, I've spoken about this and said, I know it sounds ironic because there's nothing that you ever read about, but I think that there's been a rotational um, recession that's been going on in different sectors ever since the January high of last year, certainly in the Dow, but it could be in November, December, the different indices. So if you look at this, even here, the um, if I go to the, let me just do this now. What was I looking at? I wrote it all down. I was going to read my show. But, but let, me, let me show you something here. Look, TLT. So we've heard all this news about bonds and yields, etc. Well, 179.70 was the high in March of 2020 in the iShares 20 year Treasury bond fund. I mean, this looks like a, it looks like a, um, uh, like an IPO stock that just cratered from 179 down to 91. This is almost a 50% decline. Uh, you're talking about. The, the Treasury bond, there's a bond trading like stocks, but now it's stuck in a range. And we'll see if this range can continue for a while because I think the yields are off the table as an issue right now. Now, let's look at another aspect that we, we need to talk about, and I'll talk about a little bit more in my, in my show coming up. There has been a, a rotation through the different sectors so that when you go to the SMHs, which have been acting very poorly uh, for the last three weeks, what are we looking at? We're looking at basically a recession in the semiconductors going from the 318 high of, of January of 2022 down to 166. Here again, almost cut in half. And now the very good rally back. I must tell you, a lot of the damage is being, is being repaired. I'll talk about it when I get back from my Tiger Technicians Hour. Basil Chapman sitting here for Tommy Jr. I'll be back in a few minutes. They think it's too